and I hope Boy, you I put you down for the listener feedback also. All right. Okay. And we're live. This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Colby Valve. Off-Road Off Podcast 453 Off-Road News. Tonight, Aaron falls from high, Koi hates wiring, and Ben runs to the hills. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-road. We cover news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. Your hosts tonight are Aaron, Ben, and my name is Goy. We are joined tonight by none other than the great Andy Imhoff himself. Welcome to the show. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, oh. It is lovely to be here from somewhat sunny North Florida. And you guys, I, I got to tell you, it's been interesting being in Florida because the overland style here is very different, right? Because we used to have, we used to call them pavement princesses. You would have the uh, the big lifted trucks that never went off road, right? And they had, you know, the rims I'm talking about, they're 24, 26 oh, yeah. inch and they're 14 inches wide, they're barrels. And you put these little rubber bands. And I always, in Oregon, I was like, man, why do people do that? That's so dumb. But now that I've moved here, it's starting to make a lot more sense. We have something very unique in the Gulf Coast. It's called white sugar sands, very fine powdery sand. And what I've come to realize now is I've gotten to know the Jeepers around here. You know, those those big wheels, those thin tires, they have, it, it's, a, it's a strategy, you know, there's a very different style of off-roading here. Because of the wider wheels and tires, that huge contact patch, it really, it, it allows them to get a much deeper and longer lasting stuck because the barrels <laughs> fill with sand and instead of having one buddy to pull you out might take two or three i've actually used my 150 pickup to pull a few people out so it, you know it's it's been fascinating for me just you know finding the different styles of off-roading here that is fascinating <laughs> <laughs> have you uh well why, why don't we kick it off with you uh then andy to see if you've done anything off-road related in uh in a while i i have actually um i um have become friends with some of the jeepers around here and koi you know that i mean it's probably been a year now since i got those new tires put on uh i mm -hmm. got the bfg ko3s everybody here on this podcast recommended me them to me and I didn't go super big. They're 33s. You know, they still fit just the factory F-150 with the FX4 kit. And, um, you know, you air those tires down to 12 PSI, and that truck will go absolutely anywhere. I've been out dooning and off-roading with these guys. And nice. uh, I, the one thing I hear constantly is, um, I can't believe you're out here in a full-size pickup. You're crazy. And then I always, I always point at the gladiator dudes and I'm like, well, you're in a pickup too. Ooh, that makes them mad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Oh, good. Why, why wouldn't you be out there in a full site? It's, it's not like a tree forest in Florida. Is it like, what would prevent you from not wanting a full size truck out there? Oh, it's very much a tree forest. Like we live okay. out in the forest, so you know, but I told him in Oregon we just call it pinstripes. And people around here they don't like doing that to their rigs. It's a lot sunnier, so they like it to be shiny. Like those mm -hmm. those stripes really show oh, up. Oh, you can, they show up. Yeah. yeah. Nine months of the year here, you can't see them. Yeah. And you know, you're going down to the beach. These are beach cruiser type vehicles. So, you know, the the Jeep jam that they have here in North Florida is uh bananas. And um I uh, I didn't go to the last one, but the one before that, which was like the, um, I think it was in October, if I remember correctly, thousands of Jeeps from everywhere. I mean, pouring in from 10 states around us. It's a huge event, super cool. 
a friend of mine is very uh, involved in, uh, like I said, the local Jeep club, but there's, there's gotta be six different Jeep clubs around here. I mean, it's huge. It is a huge subculture. We're getting some comments here just for having Andy on board. So uh, <laughs> Eric says, let's do an Olaf or a Fab Suey for old times sake. <laughs> you can't, you can't truly do a PG 13 Fab Suey. In no, my opinion, you, can't. you have to be able to drop some bombs. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe we need to resurrect uh fabricated suicide bit from the horsepower yeah. hour. Uh yeah. not or, against or just resurrect the horsepower hour for like a twice yearly um Fab Suey show. We, we oh, should that collect, would be nice. Collect it up and then just spend like a Saturday afternoon doing Fab Sueys and Overlands yep. and just get rowdy. Speaking of getting rowdy today. I was just operating equipment all day, kind of by myself. And you know how there's no stereo, so you have to do that 90s thing where you just entertain yourself by thought with thoughts and not your mm -hmm. phone stuff. Like, feels weird. It's like, okay, all right. It's like when you leave your phone somewhere and you go to take a dump, and you just have to sit there. <laughs> You're like, stuck with no just nothing around. Hope there's a magazine or something you can read. You know, back of the show. Uh, so yeah, I was basically doing the equipment operation of that, and I was thinking we need to come up with like some good off-road insults at some point you know like call somebody a son of a lockerless backhoe <laughs> something like that uh i you know i was thinking it'd be fun to say say that uh you know how people use the term like fatherless be behavior could mm -hmm. just be like that's that's 40 psi behavior man you need to cut that out like yeah i'll grow that <laughs> Uh, but yeah, my wiring was, I, I was working on a car and, uh, one of my exhaust hangers broke Aaron style last year, except for it ripped out the wiring on my oxygen sensor. So I had oh. to repair it. Uh, and the oxygen sensor, I, I tried to take it out and I'm like, you know what? It's going to be easier just to fix it in here than take this out and fix it. Uh, Except for my wife, yeah. you know, there's just a tiny bit of tension on this wire. Like it's just, it's not tight, but it's tight enough that you can't really like get in there and be crimping. Crimps just kept it's pulling important. out. It's important to be tight, but not too tight. Like there's, there's a correct amount of tightness and people need to understand that. That's very true. <laughs> I've heard that. Like, yeah. Uh, anyways, I got tired of it. I just went to the shop at work. And I'm like, Hey guys. Just give me some soldering wire. Cause I, of course I went through, couldn't find any soldering wire. I'm like, I need six inches of soldering wire. And they're like, we don't have any. I'm like guys, come on. <laughs> this is a six base shop. You have soldering wire here. They're like, no. And so I was like, man, I'm like, Hey, do you guys have any of those butt connectors that have the solder built into them where you just stick the wire in then heat it up and it heat shrinks and solders it they're like, Oh yeah. We've got like thousands of those. So I took a couple. Uh, I'm not using anything else ever again. I, I refuse to right? crimp anything. The, mm -hmm. That's yeah. the first time I've used those. It's amazing. Like, why, why are we still have crimp butt connectors when the ones that you can do with a lighter exist? What What took you so long is the question. I, yeah. Because uh, I have 10,000 of the old scout. I literally moved into this house and there, <laughs> in the shop, there was like, with them. like a fastenal <laughs> cabinet of 10,000 of them. Like, oh, nice. I'll never have to buy any more for the rest of my life. And I'm ready to throw them all in the river right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah ben got me hooked on those uh it's been a few years ago i i feel like ben got ben did a review of those for the podcast like five years ago or something it's well, been I a long probably time listened to it, but i didn't believe them so i <laughs> yeah well <laughs> <laughs> even a broken clock is right like twice a day so oh my goodness well so did you you get the oxygen sensor working then Oh, uh, the check engine light went off. Like, so uh, okay. I guess yeah. apparently I didn't ask yeah. it, but it seemed to. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, it's, you know, the wire is a little tighter than I'd like, but so far, so I did a couple high RPM shifts and slammed on the brakes a few times and I don't know, it's holding like what, and, uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, what about you, Aaron? See, see, you've been up to some stuff. Uh, yeah. So. Did a little bit of work on my shop. Um, 
and uh, got the last two sections of the wall finished on one side and got it polyurethane and all that stuff. And uh, wouldn't you know if I fell off the ladder again? Um, like to do oh. that. So, ah! <laughs> how injured That's... did you get this time? I mean, you look you look good. Well, I the screen you see, I had my wife take a I'm actually in the hospital right now. So oh. I had my wife take a picture of my podcast studio. Uh, the uh, hospital was kind enough to put a green bed sheet behind me. And so I'm coming. I'm recording live from the hospital right now. So uh, I could use your thoughts and prayers um, for me to get better. Broke my spleen. So, yeah, but I, I got you got two of them. So I think. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to what the doctor said. So, yeah, I'm getting organized well, out in the shop, though. I don't know that you have two of them, but between your two kids, you have two. So, exactly. Upgrades, you know, low mileage well, bodies, parts. Bodies have two of certain things. You got two lungs, you got two kidneys, you got two spleens, you got two dicks. Like, you know, two everybody's the same. Uh, the same yeah. Uh, ben. I was just gonna ask Ben what he's been up to, and then he just disappeared. How much you want to bet? Every uh oh wait, up oh, is he coming back? Is he he's back? Oh uh, I'm using I, I, forgive me, I'm using my child's mouse and it has buttons that make the screens go backwards and forwards, apparently. So I've oh, got to be okay. careful as I touch the mouse to move the mouse. So yeah. Um uh, I, well hold uh, I was going to say, um, it says Ben runs for the hills. I'm guessing that Ben did something wrong. He had to escape out of town. He's call, He's talking to us from somebody's closet. So I don't know what's I, going on. I, I'm currently in my nephew's bedroom. Um, he, he's one. All right, P. Diddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. So we... Uh, we're in Montana for, for a couple days. Well, what was going to be a couple days, uh, it might be a couple days longer now. Um, so the minivan was acting up, so I didn't want to take the minivan. Um, so I took the forerunner. And uh, hey, I, I'm I've been rig shopping today. Um, I drove a Rivian, I drove a Nissan Frontier, a Jeep truck. You just said you took the forerunner, but why are you rig shopping? Um, the forerunner did not make it here in one piece. Not, <laughs> not, not my fault. fault. Not my no, fault. No, it's not his fault. Debatable. Not my fault. Debatable. Bambi decided she wanted to run out in the road, and uh, Bambi put a hole in my block because I hit Bambi hard. Um, was this a fifty caliber deer or what's? <laughs> uh, well, it was an elk. So, ah, um, yeah. Forerunner's gone. It was a four. Well, yeah. that's good because you said you were going to paint it, and I think that was a terrible idea. So now you don't have to worry about painting it. Yeah, don't have to worry about that. So I've been rig shopping. Um, uh, the wife's kind of on the cusp of, hey, you can get a, maybe get a new rig. Uh, how new is new? Because when you say new, I was thinking like 2011. Um, well, I got to drive. She let me test drive a Bronco and a Tacoma and a couple other things. Uh, she even let me test drive a Rivian and we're going to talk money tonight and, uh, yeah. we'll see. Well, I, those all are good choices, but I can't see how a, uh, Rivian, um, would make sense for, camping and stuff for you because you like to go out farther than a lot of people do especially with we, when we go to nevada and stuff i don't know how you can make that work no mm, I, got, that, that... I, I got i'm sorry to interrupt but i so you know i get on tiktok once in a while and i've been seeing these 10 watt solar panels and and they're going for real cheap <laughs> i'm oh, gonna man. need like 800 of them for a rivian yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I drove some things. It's been interesting. Uh, I'm a little devastated over the forerunner. Um, there was time there to was move our... on. Time... Yeah. You've had it long enough. Time to move on. That's probably the longest I've ever heard you of owning a rig. So, 
Uh, yes, it is the longest I've owned a vehicle. You know, and I, I've already said we have two Toyotas on the show, and there's not enough room for your right. Toyota and mine. I, and, and I'm not trying to say mean things here, but if we had to get rid of one, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna finish <laughs> oh, that thought. Anyways, old reliable. So time old reliable for you. Is gone. Like yours, proven itself. It's got pushed three hundred thousand. Like it's. It can uh, go to the great yeah. spirit in the sky. It's fine. It's in fine. peace. Yeah. yeah. Eric off. says, wait, wasn't it rhino lined? It should have survived. Um, <laughs> it was, it was raptor lined. lined but here's my guy. question Did the door pan, <laughs> that, that rocker guard, <laughs> did it fly off when you hit the deer? Did it pop off? Please tell me it popped off. It <laughs> popped, every time I'm around it, your rocker guard comes off for, for multitudes of reasons. I'm not sure why, but it does come off every time. But both sides. Well, good. I'm glad. Good. I used to have one of those toy cars when I was a kid where you'd pull it back and it'd go. And then it had, um, you know, it, when it would hit something, all of the body panels would fly off. You guys ever see those? I, I remember yes. that. I uh, also played with one of those as a kid. But yours because my parents yeah, are too poor. Yeah. But you have one. So <laughs> we share it sometimes. It was pretty sweet. This this comment right here. This is all because you put on the skid plates. Yep, I agree. Yeah, yeah I agree. Try you tried to finish your build. You finished the build. That's like when people retire, they die like two weeks after they retire. He's retired, and he's dead. Yeah. So, so you're saying all I have to do to solve my problems is retire early? <laughs> yes. Yep. Hey, Koi, we'll take care of everything. Koi, just remember, live, laugh, toaster bath. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh Coy, we got some listener feedback. You want to read that one? I do. And guys, I was trying to find it. We had another listener question that I just remembered about, and I can't find where it was was given to us at. Uh somebody was asking about how to build an F-150, and I can't find that. Uh oh. I that was in our email, and I put that one up for next week. So if you're Not listening. Next week. It'll, we're going to answer that question next week. If All right, I guys. May, I've got yes. just a quick little, I can give you a little tip because I have an F-150. Here's how you build an F-150. You buy a 300,000 mile forerunner. <laughs> and then tow it with the F-150. After it hits an elk. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if this episode would be the right episode. People might not believe us. If we wanted to give him a, a, a way to build out his F-150. So I, I pushed it off a week. So that sounds good. Well, I think, is, I think it's Luke. I this think Luke was a, guy, so. oh, this was came in our iTunes reviews. So, uh, the boys writes in great podcast makes you want to get out and build your rig. Sometimes though, you will feel bad for Ben. You guys might need to start a new rig fund for Ben. They have great information and I love when they have people in the industry on. Well, so, we definitely now need to pull some money for Ben. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> he's he's starting his own new rig fund. Yeah. Um, Tip jar, here it I, is. I f- almost feel like Ben wrote this review. So, Oh, did Ben write it to sure. himself to try and get a go? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, feel sorry for me. I have the worst friends. This, this is a Ben Ratatouille situation. Yeah. Except for the rats in his beard. Apparently. For all of you audio listeners, and I know the majority of the listeners of the podcast are audio only, but sometime pop by the live stream because this man's got the most epic beard in the world. This is a heavily bearded podcast. It especially is. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. I just realized that. Like we are all in various degrees of manicure, but yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. If there are any uh, ladies out there that are like oh. really into facial hair, we are lumber sexual tonight. We've got uh, Mark Lawson from Tampa, Florida, checking in. Uh, he Hell does yeah, not man. have a beard, so uh, grab a toaster, jump in a s- swim pool, or something. I think this man has a beard because his little sketch has a beard. So I'm going to say we're beard buddies. He, he said that he doesn't shave have it a beard. regularly. Oh. He's yes. got stubble. All right. He's starting. He's getting there. He's one he, of those dudes. He's like, want to think. if he doesn't shave, uh, he gets a five o'clock shadow at two 30. 
an early shadow. Gotcha. Yeah. That's that's every Les Schwab employee I've come to see. <laughs> you notice that? Hey, are they still giving away free beef or is that done? No. Nah. <laughs> no, I have beef with Les Schwab, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're giving away free beef is right. Yeah. I've got some beef with them too. They oh, believe yeah. in equal rights and lefts. We also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a patch, matching sticker, and artist proof each month. We just got word they have released the April Patch of the Month and is a Claymore, and it says you found me on it, and then there's some... Uh, um those are probably like 40 mic mics and some uh grenades that are all painted like easter eggs so kind of fun if you're part of the patch of the month club that'll be showing up in a day or two i'm sure of it happy easter surprise have tire troubles ever left you deflated colby valve has got you covered Ever have a valve stem leak? Colby Valve makes reusable and easily replaceable valve stems that don't require you to remove your tire from the wheel. They work with your off-road rig, ATV, side-by-side, -side, commuter vehicle, or even your tractor. Never be left stranded again because of a busted valve stem. They also have a tire repair kit for those punctures that keep you away from doing your favorite thing, wheeling. Make sure to check out colbyvalve.com or ask for them at your local off-road product store. <laughs> Leroy Engineering says your new rig better have better tires than that old one, Ben. So oh, if yeah, he buys definitely. if he buys a new rig, it'll probably come with new tires. Well, so my my whole argument with the wife is, brand new rig means brand new everything, and if it's got lockers, I don't have to regear and get lockers. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to put any money into it. I won't except for suspension, bigger tires, bigger tires. Well, wheels, when, beadlock when you wheels. Have a stock I'm, rig is the perfect time to argue for portals because you're like, I get twenty thousand of portals. Then mm. say I'm no suspension. I can use stock suspension. Done. You know, you can and go I, through the whole list. I understand the vehicle cost me twenty five hundred dollars, but I'm telling you, this twenty thousand dollar portal axle kit that is the way to go. Yeah, it's perfect. It will instantly make that rig worth three thousand dollars all day long. <laughs> yep. Three to five, yeah. Depending on how much gas is in it. <laughs> oh, you heard his feelings. He left. See ya, Ben. He's out. Oh, he's ben. gonna. We're gonna. How much you want to bet? Bet Ben take forgot mouse away from him. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Josh ben. says that you should get a Colorado Bison. I don't mind that idea. A um, lot of dad jokes involved with that one. Yes. Every time you drive away, you can say. Bye, Bye son. son. You got three of them. Yes. I would sing "Guy on a Buffalo" twenty four seven. Yes, yes. You just have that hooked up to your horn, so rather than honking a horn, you just it starts that song. Guy on a buffalo. Yep. What about that other song? We discovered. We discovered the guy on a buffalo uh, at Coy's wedding. And we sang it the entire time we waited for the ladies to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not a lot. Coy is laughing wow. because he knows it's true. Uh, it was great. All right. Let's, uh, we, we just played the Colby valve ad, which usually means it's time for the news, but, uh, we are doing a show all about the news. Off-road news is our topic tonight. Um, please pay attention to the screen. Koi is getting serious for this portion. So yeah, our topic this week is off-road news. So we've got 11 news stories we cherry picked from the internet and, uh, yeah, we're going to get it done here. So kicking it off, Ben, Ben's got the first one here. Take it away. Yeah. This one's, this one's, um, pretty exciting news here. So. Andy broke this news to me. He was so excited. From crank Crankshaft Culture, Suzuki's announcing plans to return to North America again. Yes. 
She said, yes, indeed. So they're hoping for 2025. They pulled out in 2013. After having only the subcompact S by four, the Grand Vitar, the SUV, uh, mid-sized. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Yeah, because yeah, Nash is good enough. Yeah, that's about as good as you're going to get out of me. So according to a moderately not anonymous source, it's been re it's reevaluated U.S. market and decided that with all the strong crossovers and all that, they believe that the uh, the Jimny is going to dominate the market. Absolutely. Um, they're hoping dealers will open as soon as February 29th, 2025. They've learned from their experience and the North American market. So it's going to do... They're, they're bringing it back. Bringing um, it back. They're bringing it back. Um, they're hoping to introduce some key style cars to the North American market uh, to appeal to the urban market. I'm excited about that. I hope that it gets some laws changed here in Oregon so we can start driving them. Well, and I, I, I feel with the article is what they mean. It's like the smaller two door um smaller cars like like your smart car stuff hmm. so all right so yep yeah, they're they're doing it guys so i am going to, to for sure every time i see one of these on the highway be like her germany her. <laughs> now ben do you, remember, do you remember why i was so excited about this news ben um because you want to sit in a chimney and try We're and roll it over also, also, yes, but if you recall, I have some connections in the automotive world, you know, um, I'm, I'm pretty well connected, you guys. So I have from a very high authority, I cannot share where I got this information. I did actually share this with Coy and Aaron before the uh, podcast, so I'm very curious to get your viewpoint, Ben. Um, but I have a leaked photo. Now, granted, it is a render, but I've been told by the head of Suzuki USA, that this is 95% of, of what their new off-road lineup of vehicles is going to look like. Do you mind if I share this, Aaron? Yeah, yeah. You throw it up there. I'll get your screen share going. This is hot stuff, you guys. This is spicy. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm allowed to share this, but, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. Well, while he pulls that up, I'm going to, I want to just finish this article. It says, look for Suzuki dealerships to begin to appear in Bloomington, Indiana, Fargo, North Dakota, Winnemucca, Nevada, Ness City, Kansas. At first, the second round of openings will likely include, include Hanksville, Utah, Jack, Alabama, Walla Grass, Maine, and Moy Springs, Idaho. So if you're anywhere close to any of those towns, go check out the dealers. So yeah. here we go. Uh, there's that rendering Andy's talking about. So what, what do you think, Ben? <laughs> I think that's the car for me. I mean, it's pretty, and, and if you'll notice they, they really, I mean, they want Oregon drivers, Oregon, Washington yeah. drivers. You see what they did here? Well, you Can you zoom in on that face a little bit? Can we? <laughs> yes. Good job. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah, really want really, Oregon you need drivers. To take in, you need to take it all in. Take it all I'm in. I'm wonder I'm wearing where wondering where his mask is. Wow. Uh yeah. I do like the 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 five cool. door. Mm -hmm. I like the five door design they've got going on there. Mm -hmm. yeah. like Florida too. Team Challenge says freaking mint. So yes. Is Florida Trail Team Challenge the uh the big event where you shoot guns off road winch? It's like it's like the floor demand version of an off-road challenge. Well, that wouldn't be like guns and winches. That would be tequila. And one and alligator wrestling. Women, women who are shorter than yes. five foot four. They just said yes, old, it is. We need to have your weight guys starts with the number two about. and they're wearing string bikinis. All right. Well, yeah. Uh reach out to us Florida trail team challenge through some sort of official challenge uh, channel. I think you messaged us during the middle of a show a couple weeks ago and uh, somehow we slipped that through the cracks and forgot about it. So glad to see you're back. 
Um, yeah, let's figure this out. And there's a lot of and cranks. we'll try to get a lot of cranks. We'll try. We'll try to get Andy signed up to go, so he can be our uh, can correspondent on the F-150 ground. One fifty on thirty threes, take the win. Let us know. <clears throat> I know it's like a team thing, so you're gonna have to get one of those jeeps on twenty sixes, twenty six inch blades. But yeah, uh, yeah. All right, guys, next news story. Toyota news source. Toyota is going to be offering the Prius with TRD off-road package to compete with the Kia Sportage X-Pro. Do a surprising move. that's sure to turn heads. In both the eco-conscious and the adventure-seeking communities, Toyota has announced an introduction of an off-road package equipped with a lift kit for its iconic Prius model. This groundbreaking development marks a significant departure from Prius's traditional image as the fuel-efficient urban commuter, signaling Toyota's commitment to versatility and innovation in its lineup. The off-road package, aptly named the Prius Trail Charger, aims to cater to consumers who desire both eco-friendliness and light off-road capability without compromising on either front. With this package, the Prius is transformed into a rugged-ish vehicle capable of tackling rough terrain and venturing off the beaten path with confidence. Key features of the Prius Trail Charger package include a lift kit. The most noticeable addition to the Prius Trail Charger is a specifically engineered lift kit, which provides increased ground clearance to navigate challenging terrain. This enhancement not only improves off-road performance, but also enhances the Prius's overall stance, giving a more commanding presence on the road. All-terrain tires. To complement the lift kit, Toyota equips the Prius Trail Charger with all-terrain tires designed to provide exceptional traction on various surfaces, including mud, gravel, and rocking terrain. These tires ensure optimal performance in off-road conditions while maintaining efficiency on paved roads. Uh, it comes with skid plates as well, guys. Uh, protecting vital components of the vehicle during off-road excursion, the Prius Gel Charger comes equipped with reinforced skid plates that shield the underbody from damage caused by rocks, debris, and other obstacles inter- encountered off-road. And enhanced suspension, the Prius Trail Charger boasts an upgraded suspension tuned for off-road driving, delivering a smoother ride and improved handling on uneven surfaces. This enhancement contributes to greater stability and control, enhancing the driver's confidence in challenging off-road conditions. <clears throat> Exterior accents. To distinguish the Prius Trail Charger visually, Toyota adds an ex- exclusive exterior accents, including bold graphics, rugged fender flares, and distinctive front grille design. These enhancements not only enhance the vehicle's aesthetics, but also underscore its off-road proudness. And, Koi, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm just curious, Ben, after seeing those renders, do you think that front bumper would do any better against the elk? <laughs> no. But I think the um, that hood angle and wind, windshield uh-huh. might allow it to go airborne uh-huh. um, so that it does not um, use those crumple zones. Well, I was yeah. I was thinking the same thing. These are all clearly renders. I love it when they do a good render where it's like, huh, mm-hmm. it doesn't even look that much like the regular Prius. Couldn't you just render a regular Prius with an inch and a half lift kit? Was it that difficult? Well, well Koya, yeah. I, I don't want to bury the lead here. I actually have some connections at Toyota too, but we'll talk about that at the end of the episode, okay. at, the, at the end of the article here. I, go, I Can I cut in for a second? Uh, Montana Dirt Road says that it looks like Elon drew this. And Andy, I know you actually have a tight connection to elon so i do maybe, yeah uh, we uh we're old buddies we went to a community college together yeah i yeah I, that's what i thought from uh i heard that on your your other podcast so maybe yeah. I, does this look like his handiwork or i mean what do you think uh, i mean it's not quite um angular enough to be something from elon see the thing about elon is when he draws he likes to draw dicks and then he just that's his basis like he draws the dick and balls and then he just sort of uh shapes it from there and you know the cyber truck for example it's it's hard to understand it like you're looking at the cyber truck and you're like that does not look phallic at all but what you need to understand is he drew the penis first and then i handed him a ruler and i was like why don't you try this (laughs) <laughs> and and that's how he came up with the rest of the shape of the cyber truck. So I I'm actually directly um I had direct involvement with the design of the cyber truck. I'm pretty proud of that. He's never going to credit okay. me for it because he's a narcissist. But he learns that from his father who owns a ruby mine. So, so <laughs> was this in like art 201 or 
or watercolor after class or what? Oh, no, 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 Aaron. No, no. 201. This, this was art 113. Okay. All right. He only made, he only made it to the second semester. Look, when someone designs PayPal and, and then, and then your dad's lawyers steal PayPal from that person. And then you get to sell it for a billion dollars. You're not going to spend all of your time in class. That's not how it works. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, this definitely doesn't. This looks like it has a radar signature. Yeah. And Elon stuff clearly doesn't. So that's why well, I would you say. You guys are going to have a great next episode when you're explaining why you're being sued by Elon Musk. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Can't wait to get a <laughs> cease and desist from, yeah. te from Tesla. <laughs> Uh, oh, you'll get, one, you'll get one from Toyota too. Cause I got some leaked images. Here. <laughs> oh, you've got some to share on, on this Toyota or on a, I do. on a future yeah. article. No, no, no. I, I have leaked images. Uh, again, they're renders, but, but okay. I'm told they're 98% of, of what the off-road Prius is actually going to look like. And it's nothing, this time. It's nothing like that. It's nothing oh. like that. All right. All right. Um, no, you, right. guys, you, you, want to share. How, you don't understand how deeply I'm involved in the automotive world. You really don't. I mean, these are, this is cutting edge stuff. You're not going to see it anywhere else. Wow. <laughs> That's actually really similar to the Jimny we saw, here, but better, honestly. <laughs> same tires. <and> everything. <laughs> like, is this the same contact for both Toyota and Suzuki or is it actually a different contact? <laughs> <laughs> are they working together? Are they working together to get Suzuki back in the American market? Is it like the same design studio or something? You know, I don't know how you guessed that it was the same, the same engineer. But yeah, he works for both. It's pretty, wow. it's pretty shocking. Yeah, I like the latter on the side. <laughs> that was a nice inclusion by Toyota. You know, well, they, yeah, just, they, do, they do a little something. Just to go that extra mile for you guys. I'm so glad we brought you on for these deep cut. Uh, these you know, deep there's, cut. A, there's a little Easter egg here for you. Yeah, this is but, this is nice. Yeah, they they really love the whittle ladder, don't they? Yeah, the whittle ladder. All right, guys, let me finish this out. Uh, <laughs> the Prius Trail Charger is slated to hit dealership show showrooms later this year, offering environmentally conscious drivers. A unique blend of sustainability and versatility as Toyota continues to push the boundaries of automotive innovation, which I'd like to see where <laughs> they got CarPlay like eight minutes ago, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, go ahead and let me know where they're pushing boundaries. But uh, the Prius Trail tra Trailblazer stands as a testament to the brand's commitment to meeting the evolving needs and preferences of modern consumers. You said Trailblazer. You meant Trail Charger. Sorry, trail Charger. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just Whoops. the prompter had a mistype, and I just it's on the prompter. I read it, read the words. Know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I do like the name. I gotta admit, the Trail Charger, I, it's kind of got uh, got that word that's got kind of multiple meanings. The Trail Charger, like it's yeah. charging up the trail. It beats yeah. trail, maybe. Yeah, or trail. I don't know. Trailish. Uh, I mean, trail honestly, trail. honestly, I think just Toyota's like, all right. We know our audience. They love granola. They love hitting the trails and getting to those awesome hiking spots. Josh Eisen asked what the new Forerunner is going to look like. Is that what it's going to look like too? So I heard that they're introducing the Prius Trail Charger because the so they have a, the same amount of off roady vehicles they did when they got the new Forerunner version out. So I, I have used I have be. more insider information. Um, my buddy at Toyota. My buddy at Toyota actually told me that all of the three to six hundred thousand mile forerunners are going to start crashing into elk soon, and uh, <laughs> that's why they're introducing these. And so it's a it's a bit of a is that a design flaw or is it a feature? It's cool. You know what planned obsolescence is, don't you? <laughs> yeah. You know they got that long vision, right? Toyota's really looking sure. towards the future. They had to genetically engineer an elk that was attracted to the whistlers on aged out. It's not only that. Right. They had to, they were had to were they feeding them Fukushima water or something? They had to genetically engineer the hipsters that would be buying their 
1996 forerunners in 2020. Yeah. Not that you're a hipster fan. Sorry. Florida trail teams got your email. Thanks for reaching out. Making deals live on the podcast. This is yeah. why you guys are the best. Nicholas, the best. Uh, a Cole from uh, Cemented Tunings is in the comments. Do you think you're going to have a uh, tune for the Trail Charger? I want to see a cemented tune mm, for the Trail Charger. That's, man. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right, Andy, mm. we got uh, we got another story here. This is an amazing one, you guys. And Aaron, you gave me this one because I'm a bit of a food guy, and I appreciate that. Uh, from Critical Food Magazine, Taco Bell spices up emergency preparedness with survival kits featuring signature sauces. Uh, I apologize, you guys. I am going to be a little bit nasally in this um, because these boys, uh, they didn't just pull me out of the mothballs. I've actually had the flu for the last week. So we're going to get through this together. Last week. He's only he has had the flu for the last two and a half years. That's why we haven't been able to have him on the pot. So it's been a yeah, it's been a butt kicker. True. That emergency penisectomy was real hard on me. Uh, boys, in a surprise twist, Taco Bell, known for its bold flavors and quick service, Mexican inspired cuisine. Mm, that's all okay. It's five <laughs> ingredients they put in different ways and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, and I they, love it. Well, Aaron. They're venturing into new territory by expanding their brand to preparedness. The fast food giant has announced the launch of survival kits priced at just $9.99. In this economy, in, in this Bidenomics world, $9.99, that is that is cheap, everybody. All of that, look, man, I don't know if you guys watch any of the conspiracy theorists online or if you watch any of the like super... Um, it's the same price as a bell beaver yeah, bro that's that is cheap that is cheap you know what i'm talking about like this this should be 40 50 bucks all day long and you're getting it for 9.99 right now that tells you the taco bell is invested in your security and survival that's that's an important distinction to make you guys when you're looking at emergency preparedness kits Oh, look, we've got the dehydrated blah, 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 blah. Oh, look, you can get no oh, pancake mix. Like, what are you going to do with any of that? None of that's ready-made. You want to talk about a ready-made meal? You're talking about Taco Bell hot sauce packets. It's already been proven that you can survive off of these. We were talking about it before the show. Pay attention to this, you guys. They are aimed at equipping customers with essential, essential needs for unforeseen emergencies, Okay. They have come to the decision based on the experiences of the Oregon man who was stuck in the snow in his SUV for five days, surviving on nothing but their signature hot sauce packets. Probably a lot of melted snow as well. Maybe some M&Ms and peanuts he found underneath the seats. We don't know. I heard that he started that trip with two dogs and he left with one, but it's not confirmed. So, Well, Koi... The I didn't want to get racial, so I'm just going to leave that part out, okay? Each kit includes a wide variety, you guys. And I don't, you know, I'm a spicy person. I don't know how you guys are. You know, you might want to get a kit that's all mild. You might want to get a kit that's all hot. You got to be careful, though, because if you get the fire sauce, and, and as it tends to do, Aaron, back me up. Sometimes you get a little bit of bubble gut. That's not good for survival. So you got to custom no. tailor these kits to your needs, you guys. Okay. But it, at any rate, this man was stuck in the snow in his SUV for five days and he survived on nothing but hot sauce packets. Sorry. I know this is a tangent, but how many fucking hot pockets or pocket packs of hot sauce does the guy have? Like you survive for five days off of hot sauce packets? <laughs> Does he just keep 40 of them in his glove box? D doesn't everyone, especially now? That is, are they still self-service in Taco? I haven't been to Taco Bell in years. Can you oh, still he, just grab however many you want? Yes. Most of them, yes. Unless and, it's and a bad if you go the, down. And if you ask for sauce, they usually just grab a handful and just toss it in the bag. Well, suddenly the nine ninety nine is not seeming like such a deal because I think you can DIY your own kit. But it at any rate, like occasionally they're trying to punish you 
with so many like they're just like here's four thousand hot sauce packets on top of your food and yeah. then you can't get your food out i've definitely had that happen and then they're all greasy and you're watching these seven-year-old kids like wipe their snot and then reach into the yeah I, I know so you know what i'm back i'm back on board just get the kit no no flu infested kid has touched it okay but listen, each kit includes a selection of Taco Bell signature hot and mild sauces, ensuring that even in the face of adversity, individuals can add a flavorful kick to their meals, which at this point is going to be snow. Additionally, for those looking to up their survival game, Taco Bell offers an option to purchase bottles of its exclusive survival sauce in a convenient six pack, by the way, providing ample supply for extended periods of preparedness. Now I recommend instead of going directly into the mouth, you go under the tongue that gives you a longer lasting flavor sensation. It'll keep you going in those long winter nights. This unexpected move by Taco Bell reflects the company's innovative approach to meeting consumer needs beyond the realm of traditional fast food. By tapping into the growing market for emergency preparedness products, Taco Bell not only diversifies its offerings, but also reinforces its brand identity as a provider of bold and unconventional solutions. With the introduction of these survival kits, Taco Bell not only offers a taste of comfort, but also a sense of assurance in uncertain times, providing, proving that when it comes to preparedness, a little bit of flavor can go a long way. And that is Man. so important these days. That that news article almost sounded like a ad spot. I feel like Taco Bell owes us money um, for an ad read that we just did. That was amazing. I feel like Andy probably has deep contacts in Taco Bell, and they kind of coached <laughs> him up on this. Pre uh, honestly, I'm thinking I'm thinking he has contacts at uh, Arby's, and he wants to sell Arby's more than he does Taco Bell. I, I see Plow. Plow guy Dave in the comments says, I see your Taco Bell packets and raise you Arby's packets. I don't know if these are nationwide yet, but I see all those and I raise you Dave's hot chicken, Dave sauce packets, bro. Uh, ooh. <laughs> those, those things are like the size of my forearm. It's, it's literally like a ketchup packet, but it's probably four or five times bigger. Wow. It's amazing. All right, well, we're just going to have to keep chugging along here. We've only got three stories done, and we've still got eight more coming your way. So uh, oh, this news article comes to us from SUVs Weekly Online today. Um, Ram and Chevy make a comeback with Ram Charger and Blazer amid Ford Bronco craze. Uh, in response. <laughs> Badland asks if there's a uh, unreleased rendering of the new sauce packet design. <laughs> I sure hope so. Maybe Andy can pull that up. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, in response to the resounding success of the Ford Broncos rival, Ram and Chevy are poised to assert their presence in the off-road SUV market with the reintroduction of two iconic models, the Ram Charger and the Chevy Blazer. With the Bronco commanding attention and setting new standards for adventure-ready vehicles, Ram and Chevrolet are reviving their storied nameplates to vie for a piece of the rapidly expanding off-road enthusiast pie. Uh, Montana says, Dirt Road says, didn't GM already mess up the Blazer last time? So yeah, they did. Uh, they, they're calling it the Trail Blazer, but now they're just bringing back the Blazer nameplate with this one. They're dropping the trail. Hopefully they can do it right. We've got some renderings on this one. If you guys can dig those up. Uh, meanwhile, no she, the Chevy can't come out and mess it up twice. Like that's not, <laughs> not like they yeah. haven't done that before. So it's true. That's true. Uh, meanwhile, Chevy is set to reignite excitement with the return of the blazer, leveraging its rich heritage to captivate adventure seeking consumers. The reintroduction of the blazer is poised to channel and captivate adventure seeking consumers. Oh, I already read that line and I got lost in the sentences. The reintroduction of the blazer is poised to channel the spirit of its predecessors while embracing contemporary design and re-engineering advancements. There's a whole lot of words in this article. Uh, I'm going to skip to the rampart. Uh, as the automotive landscape continues to evolve, the reintroduction of the Ram Charger and Blazer signifies a renewed emphasis on heritage and innovation among manufacturers. With the Bronco setting the stage for resurgent of off-road vehicles, 
Graham and Chevrolet are seizing the opportunity to make their marks with an iconic nameplates that resonate with enthusiasts, old and new. <laughs> Uh, as anticipation builds for the arrival of the revived mark models, one thing can be certain the competition in the off road SUV segment is heating up, promising an exhilarating showdown amongst industry titans. My favorite part before we cut back to Taco Bell, my favorite part about this article is not once in the SUV's weekly online today news article did they talk about the Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> Which has held down the segment forever. It's like been keeping it afloat. So it's anyways. because they have taste. Andy, you're muted. It's both held down the segment and somehow been the least reliable vehicle, according to <laughs> JD Powers, for like 10 years. It's amazing. At least. At least it, yeah. I yes. think, well, I think as of 2023, Stellantis has three of the top 10 spots of the worst reliable vehicles on the market it's great that new uh where and, number three where number three <laughs> the new uh grand cherokee holy crap you guys i know we're having a fun I, uh, like, episode but goodness gracious have you seen the reliability stuff on the jeep grand cherokees huh. why would Real. you expect it to be reliable it, it only base is only have like eighty nine thousand dollars have they okay. ever been reliable so, uh, but but the new the new Jeep Grand Cherokee it's it's a hundred thousand dollars, and I mean just just type into TikTok or YouTube or um, Instagram or whatever. Just type in like um, I don't know, do something like uh, Grand Cherokee sunroof leak, and it's just thousands of videos of people who are like, I spent ninety eight thousand dollars on this, and water's pouring inside while it's raining. What is happening? Are I you hope... talking about the Wagoneer or the Grand Cherokee? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the Wagoneer. Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. I hope well, they do one of those cool fixes, like when Toyota just took and cut everybody's uh, floor mats with, like, lineman dikes. They just chopped them with, like, 10 snips. I was like, there you go. Now it's the gas pedal. I hope they do that where they just get, like, black roofing tar and just go around it on top. Like, there. This is a temporary fix. We're coming out with the... They, uh, they wanted also, to do that to my four, floor mats in the Forerunner. Well, also, don't, don't get it confused, because lineman dikes, that's actually a term for... We can't go there, Andy. Can't go yeah, there. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, and I also all want right. to point out if we're going to have all these SUVs back, like this puts us back in the 80s, basically, we need a new Chuck Norris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That comes, that comes with all these cool off road machines. We need a new Chuck Norris. So, all right. So, so obviously, we're, imp we're, we're impressed by the Ram Charger, right? We're happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think, uh, it, I think it's good looking. They've yeah. redeemed themselves after the Blazer Trailblazer. I hope. I hope so. I hope they can pull it off. Um, we'll see. It's got to be body on frame. It can't be this unibody garbage, like they've been doing. They have plenty yeah. of time to ruin it. Like I mean, just because it looks good in render doesn't mean that they can't trash yeah. it before it hits the showroom yeah. floor. No, no, Andy, you uh, you got that that thing right? Should the, we show that the leak? I do. I do. So I just quickly reached out to a buddy of mine. It, I'm very multifaceted. Not only do I, I went to college with Elon Musk. I'm friends with basically all of the CEOs of all the automotive companies because of my time in the food world. I, I know the people over at Taco Bell and I asked them just real quick. I was like, Hey buddy, you, you got anything about the, you know, Taco Bell survival sauce packets. And he's like, you just, well, we you just, you're on like a first name basis with Mr. Bell. I, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I call him Taco. That's we're close. We're, we're real close. And so yeah, he you just don't let want to insult the guy. Yeah, no, their survival packets actually come in a new uh, carrier, and I think the carrier is phenomenal. Looks like a good design here. Here it's coming up on the screen. There it is. <laughs> it's fire, bro. <laughs> that is fire. See, they got you. Seriously, fire. Yokiero survival. Uh, that's that's what Taco Bell's doing these days. Yokiero survival. Eric wants to know if you're friends with the Taco Bell dog. Also, uh, he well, passed Cheech, away, didn't he? No, he's he's dead, man. There's been five different. The first two were Cheech and Chong, and then it just it got real racial. I think the new Taco Bell dog is Luis. 
Okay. But he goes by Lewis because he's the fourth generation. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, that's great. Um, thanks for reaching out. Uh, yeah, and no getting getting us the scoop. I was happy Literal to scoop the scoop. Yeah, <laughs> I knew we brought you on for a reason. All right. Well, we we need a serious recovery talk here, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, so from Warren Brazil. Factor 55 has been teasing their safety-focused recovery ball hitch. So many people love to use them. I've just got to hop into this. Uh, Factor 55, a renowned manufacturer specializing in off-road vehicle recovery equipment, has unveiled its latest innovation, the recovery ball hitch. While details remain scarce, Factor 55 has emphasized the paramount safety features uh, with this new project is shearing customers that's designed to prevent sudden shearing incidents that could pose serious risks. The recovery ball hitch is set to debut at SEMA. Enthusiasts and industry professionals alike are eagerly awaiting the official announcement from Factor 55. But, I mean, Brazil, they just have all these leaks, so... There it is on the screen. Um, I think I could tow tow my trailer with that just fine. What do you guys think? I think you could tow a mobile home with that thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That thing's looks that is sturdy, stout, stout. I don't think it would snap I, with it. You can recover yourself and or get an old lady to see your future. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine busting your shim on, shin on that bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an automatic it, ankle. Movement. I felt my heartbeat go up and I got angry thinking like I immediately thought about stealing it. Like, and I've wondered this actually before, Aaron, you know, that giant hitch thing you had in your uh, Nissan that disappeared in Moab. I, I bought a new one for our next Moab trip. I, I know we thought somebody just stole that while we were camping or at the, the Airbnb. Or did somebody blast their shin on it and then in a sheer fit of pain rage, just take it and walk away and be like, you don't and deserve it. Just wing it. Yeah, it just, it just uh, hurled it in the bushes. Crankshaft Cultures in the comments says, I think you could tow a continent with that thing. So I'm curious. It's, you know, sometimes when people drop products, but they put sneak peeks mm -hmm. in the background of the product. I, there's two things going on here. Number one, the license plate says TAC, T A C, like tactical 566, which is almost like 556. I'm wondering if Factor 55 might be also getting into the uh, weapons game. And then the second thing is the receiver is circular on the back of this truck. I wonder if they're hinting at a new form of a receiver where it's round, rotating I mean, for safety. Makes more sense. Yes. Uh, that yeah. hitch looks like it kind of can hinge in all sorts of directions so that your rig is not at risk of flipping as well. Yeah, this is kind of a clever setup. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I can't wait to see it at SEMA this year. Oh, SEMA is going to be amazing this year. Oh, it's going to be hot. But all not right, as so hot as the Taco Bell survival packets, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, guys. Uh, since I'm the Honda guy, I guess I have to read this. <clears throat> this comes from the Honda guys.com. Honda makes an is making an off-road push and has now introduced a transfer case and rear locker for pilot and ridgeline uh automobiles in a bold move, sig signaling its entry into the off-road market. I don't know if that's much of a signal, but Honda has announced plans to offer a transfer case and lockers for the Pilot and Ridgeline series. With this strategic initiative, Honda aims to cater to adventure-seeking enthusiasts and meet the growing demand for capable off-road vehicles. By equipping its popular models with enhanced off-road capabilities, Honda seeks to position itself as a formidable competitor in the rugged terrain segment, traditionally dominated by other manufacturers. I don't, I don't think formidable means what they think formidable means well, maybe they've just uh, finally acknowledged how much they've sucked in the off-road market yeah but i they're saying hey i'm gonna throw a transfer i'm gonna throw a low range and a rear locker in this and 
and it's now formidable. It's still a ridgeline, bro. Like, come on. Uh, the introduction of the transfer case and locker marks a significant step forward for a Honda for the Honda as the brand expands its product offerings to appeal to a broader range of consumers. With these upgrades, the Pilot and Ridgeline series are poised to deliver improved traction control and maneuverability in challenging off-road conditions. Honda's foray into the off-road market underscores its commitment to innovation and customer satisfaction, promising enthusiasts an exhilarating driving experience, both on and off the beaten path. No word on if they will add a full body on ladder frame, which that means no. <clears throat> uh, ben, so you're looking for a new truck. A Ridgeline's not a truck. A Ridgeline with a low range and a locker? Like, yeah, I mean, you, how long, you how are long a bus driver. This kind of fits. Think of the fuel economy. Yeah, I just got to, you know, I I, I kind of need a vehicle like yesterday. That's my problem. Mm. Just just think Can't about, wait. like, you park the school bus, and then you're whistling, spinning oh. some keys around your finger as you walk over and hop into your Honda Ridgeline off-road or whatever they call it it's, it's um kind of does it have a v-tech you know i need the crackle and pop pop, pop. of course it will all yeah will. yeah and later on when it gets high mileage we can case swap it case swap it oh. yes case swap the uh, world case swap the world uh montana dirt roads has an explorer he can lend you ben um does it have yeah. Firestone tires still? Yeah, no word. Um, uh, Leroy so. says, I think that will be the first selectable T case in a unibody vehicle. How dare you? Jeep did this in 1989. <laughs> it's called Maybe. the XJ. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most used and abused trash vehicles ever made. Koi, do you remember when I had that neighbor who took the doors off of his? Yes. Yes. <laughs> His XJ. And he went out wheeling. And then uh when he came home and went to put the doors on. back on, they wouldn't they wouldn't fit. None of them closed. <laughs> I had thought of that in a very long time. That dude yeah. was man, he was uh pickle short of a full barrel, but that was one of oh, them. Man. I remember he made exhaust for his Celica out of actual square gutter tubing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> literally <laughs> <a> gutter tube. <laughs> this is no, this is no joke, guys. Like, no, I, yeah. we walked over and we're staring wow. at the square tube that just side exited it in front of the rear tire, and he was like revving it for us, showing us how good it sounded. And we're like, he, dude, he, is that thing backfiring? And he's like, I wish, <laughs> I wish yeah, no, that because Coy and I both had at the time, I mean, relatively speaking, fast street racing cars. And uh, he was Almost like, oh, I can do that. Slightly slower than a modern Maxima, but yeah. Well, yeah. Look, times have changed fast, real fast. But uh, I remember when he welded the front diff in that so that he could uh, drag race better. And then he hit four curbs at the, like in 15 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he was a cool guy. Uh, oh, he's great. Uh, crankshaft culture asks if it had leaf guard. No, he did not spring for leaf guard. <laughs> this guy, yeah. this guy went straight to, I think then it would have been called home base, not home Depot. He went straight oh, to home yeah. base and Ooh, got yeah. him some, some like two Man, by three inch base. gutter tube. What a throwback home base. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, um, I got some big news from Overland Gazette and just, so that you're aware, I'm I'm good friends with the guys over there. So I may have a little something special. I haven't even know. heard of this publication. Really? You haven't heard of it? I mean, it's a little bit no, smaller I... than Crankshaft Culture, and it's definitely smaller than the Off Road Podcast. But but they're doing good work out there. Real okay, good work. All right, I'm gonna look I've, them I've up. I've got connections Gazette. over with these boys. It, I mean, granted, the the owner of Off Road Gazette, he used to make bootleg porn DVDs, but with the advent of the internet he needed to do something different now he's doing this and so he was he on public access television in 1994 through 1998 yes first name mike right buddy ben you and i are on the same page we both know the same guy you probably know what i'm, I'm gonna pull up you probably share it with you guys too. in the industry so he's he's got the most amazing render and this was sent over to him from max tracks because Max Trax is launching a game-changing eight-foot-long recovery board 
with auto level features you guys this is insane like i need to i need to get eight or nine of these seriously they're not for me they're for all the jeep people that i hang out with max tracks a leading name in off-road recovery equipment is making waves in the recovery realm with the introduction of their innovative eight foot long recovery boards designed to revolutionize off-road recovery these extended length boards eliminate the need for combining several boards together offering a seamless solution for getting unstuck in challenging terrain they will be called the maxi tracks at eight feet long these boards are almost double the length of a standard board Beyond their traditional recovery function, these new Max Tracks boards boast impressive capabilities, including building bridging obstacles, an auto leveling feature that simplifies camp setup during overlanding adventures with just a push of a button included with the included remote or via the Maxi Tracks app on your phone. Users can effortlessly level their rigs at camp by driving onto these advanced recovery boards, providing unparalleled convenience and efficiency in off road expeditions. The launch of the six foot max tracks recovery boards signifies a significant advancement in off-road recovery technology. I'm going to have to talk to him about signify as significant. That's, that's bad form. The catering to an evolving needs of outdoor enthusiasts and overland travelers built with durability and versatility in mind. These boards are engineered to withstand rugged terrain and facilitate smooth transitions over obstacles. Whether navigating through mud, sand, rocky terrain, adventurers can rely on Max Trax's Maxi Trax recovery boards to provide reliable traction and support, ensuring a safe and enjoyable off road experience. With their innovative features and practical design, the new Maxi Trax boards are set to redefine off road recovery, setting a new standard for performance and convenience in the industry. And I'll tell you what, boys. They've actually teamed up with Honda. We were just talking about the new Pilot and Ridgeline and, and how good those are going to be with the new lockers. They're actually teaming up with them. People who are buying these new Ridgelines, I've, I've got a sneak peek of what they're in for. <laughs> wow. I like how well it fits on top of the Pilot. It seems... Seems bigger no. than eight feet, and that new ridge line, man, those are like what forty fours. No, but you know this is a render koi, so but uh, this is ninety five percent. I've been told this is this is ninety eight percent. So this was insider at Honda. Is this going to be? Is the new Maxi Track going to be like an OEM no. option this, or? This is an insider at Max Tracks. They're working with Honda. And by the way, all of these images will be available to you, probably not, uh, through the link tree off-road podcast. I'll see what I can do for you, Aaron, but probably not. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I just want to be uh, clear. We did not prep Andy with any of these. As far as I know, he's doing this on the fly. <laughs> yes. He could be doing this while he reads an episode. I don't I don't know what's happening right now. It is, <laughs> there's yeah. a little bit. I mean, there's some preparation that goes into it, Koi, but you wouldn't know about that, would you? I, I don't. <laughs> yes. Ouch. Oh, man. Um, I, those are long. Um, I've not seen anything that long in a long time. So that's uh, impressive. Uh, Badlands. Badlands says if it doesn't come with a Taco Bell survival kit, it's a deal breaker. I do think that uh, Max Tracks and Taco Bell should team up for a promotion. I, that would be amazing. I Talk about a, crossing the border with your eight foot Max Tracks. What a hit. What Fourth a hit. Meal. <laughs> Fourth meal. This is this is 15th meal. You're out in the boonies. The Max Tracks, the the Max Tracks lizard and the Chihuahua can get in a fight. But then you know, become friends at the end. This is completely unofficial. Um, I don't know if this is what it's going to look like, but I I feel like you know, given my background, this might be a pretty accurate representation of what a, a combination of those might look like. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty. I like it's, it's a trachyru sized fire sauce pack on the back of a ridge line with a eight foot max track board on top. I that like is. It. That is, in fact, a 58 gallon uh, flexi fuel bag that is filled with fire sauce. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Climb into it. A, wow. Yeah. All right. I'm going to jump us to this next. You got yeah. to join the live stream, you guys. You, 
because there's there's stuff going on. All right. Uh, this next article is brought to us from Adventure Gear Club Members Magazine of Rural New Hampshire. Um, ARB ventures into new frontiers and introduces overland setups for Cessnas and Sea Rays. Uh, in a groundbreaking ex breaking expansion beyond a traditional off-road market, ARB, a leading provider of aftermarket vehicle accessories, has announced its foray into the marine and air industries. With this strategic move, ARB will now offer overland setups specifically ta tailored for Cessna aircraft and Sea Ray boats, catering to adventure enthusiasts seeking exploration beyond land-based terrains. The introduction of overland setups for Cessna and Sea Ray models represents a significant diversification in ARB's portfolio, leveraging the brand's expertise in design rugged, reliable equipment for off road vehicles. Um, yeah, let me put a pause it here. Here we go. I got to get one of these photos up while I read. Um, for Cessna aircraft, uh, they're talking about adding roof racks, um, custom designed roof racks that can be securely attached to the wings or fuselage. These racks will provide additional storage for outdoor gear, such as camping equipment, survival kits, Taco Bell hot sauce packets, or adventure accessories. Auxiliary lighting. Um, the ARB has high quality auxiliary lighting solution tailored for Cessna aircraft, including LED light bars or spotlights. These lights will enhance visibility during low light conditions, such as dawn or dust flights, as well as provide illumination for landing in remote areas. Cargo nets and tie down straps to secure cargo during flight. ARB offers heavy duty cargo nets and tie down straps designed specifically for use in aircraft. These accessories would ensure Gear remains safely stowed and prevents shifting or movement during flight. Awning systems. ARB retractable awnings attached to the exterior of Cessna aircraft, providing shade and shelter for passengers during ground stops or remote landing sites. And the last thing for Cessnas is custom interior accessories that will be tailored for the cabins, such as storage organizi organizers, seat covers, or floor mats. They will optimize space and functionality, making the cabin more comfortable and efficient for passengers and pilots alike. I got to cut back here real quick to the awnings before we jump to the sea race. Um, they, they make um, those bat wing awnings. How much more lift could you get with a, a bat wing awning one on each side, a 180 on each side of your Cessna? Any thoughts on that? A little extra cargo capacity andy you're muted sorry sorry it comes down to support structure you guys so if if we you know roll ourselves back to high school physics we know how a wing works so what it comes down to it's it's a little bit of user error you guys how you pack you know like what shape is it giving and then how much lift versus drag is it giving? That sounds, it sounds complicated, but you really, you can feel it out. It's okay. You, you gotta, you gotta become like an aerodynamic engineer in 1966, right? Um, Errol Shelby famously killed one of his, uh, his best friends because they made aerodynamic changes to the GT40. And during testing, um, it took off, flew off the track. So, you know, you, you got to kind of, you, you got to put some thought into it, but, but as long as you're not worried about, oh, what am I going to do if my plane falls out of the sky or, you know, like if, if you just, if you grow a pair and you go, I think I've got this figured out, you'll, you'll probably figure it out. I wonder if you had a, uh, engine failure, if you could deploy an awning as a parachute to slow your descent. Also, that's another thought. You may lose all of your marijuana that you've packed up in the top of the rack, but you know you'll escape with your life that time. Yeah. You Then you'll have that to explain time. it to your dealer. That's, you know, I'm right. just can't wait for like, uh, those one pound green propane tanks to rattle out mm -hmm. of this Cessna roof tab mm -hmm. and be dropping from the sky. Like, uh, bombs. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's jump to the C Ray portion. So, uh, 
Roof racks, similar to setups for Cessna aircraft, ARB has designed roof racks specifically for installation on Sea Ray boats. Andy, we can get back to that if you want to pull it up. Sorry, I I I forgot about your your. Custom, oh no, it's you. Well, uh, let's, this is a lot of this is a lot of insider baseball. You know, it yeah, might be too much maybe, really for the listeners. Might be too much for okay. I I don't right. know. It's up to you guys. I'm just I'm letting you know. Like I, I came fully prepared. I'm fully into the insider tips and I would love to see what you have. Like, is this for the boat if, or a, you got an insider ARP? Who are we talking about here? Uh, well, I, I got a buddy over at Cessna and, and he shared with me some, cause they're collaborative, you know how it works. And so this is uh, kind of what you can expect to uh, see for their, their small, this is a single prop plane. Hang business. on a second. I've seen, I've seen this exact rig at gambler 500. Uh, well that was their prototype okay okay all right yeah. the wings were probably shortened because the the telephone poles only have 20 feet of access between the trees so it was probably a little shortened okay i like that so like, is the uh the tail number there it's P R B E J. yeah three beach interesting the tail number on the plane you saw aaron was uh four four two zero six nine uh blz f f g g so it's a little bit different but similar okay all right yeah that's uh that's exactly what i imagine they would look like so it's a little throwback for my millennial friends yeah all right uh c ray boats there they are uh, so roof racks, similar to the setup on Cessna, they have designed roof racks specifically for installation on Sea Ray boats. They would offer additional storage capacity for water sports equipment, fishing gear, or recreational accessories. Uh, lighting, um, light bar, spotlights, navigation lights that are designed specifically for watercraft. They will enhance visibility during nighttime navigation and provide illumination for anchoring or docking in remote areas. Uh Deck cargo system. This is kind of cool. I actually I read this one wrong. I thought it said dock cargo system. So I was like, actually, that's kind of cool. Maybe they should come out with both a deck cargo and a dock cargo system. So they are modular deck cargo systems that attach securely to the deck of the boats, providing versatile storage solutions for outdoor gear and equipment. They would allow boaters to maximize space and organization on board. They're also coming out with a line of awnings, which you can kind of see in this picture. They, they're all tucked up really well. Um, retractable awnings uh, for the boats that provide shade and shelter for the passengers during on-water activities or beach outings. And the last part is interior accessories. Uh, so they're going to continue with the interior theme with uh, storage bins, cup holders, marine-grade seat covers that... Uh, are once again going to enhance comfort and functionality for passengers and crew members during extended voyages. So this is wild. I had no idea that ARB was sneaking into the uh, Marine and aviation line. This, this one caught me off guard. You guys. Well, my, my, my buddy, Tommy, he, uh, he's a, an avid boater and uh, I can really see him doing this. I mean, he's always talking about, oh, I, I like to go out like you do. Um, he needs some overland accessories, seriously. I don't know how to interject this in a joke form, but uh, what you just showed is like, I don't know, a third of the boats that I see on the water where I live. Because <laughs> I know, I know, I know. This is the April Fool's episode. I get it. But what do you, do you know what? how many... You have no idea how many sport fishing boats I've seen here in North Florida that look exactly like that. They've got four levels of flying decks so that they can have 18 people fishing at the same time and they all have coolers. Like, this is actually a thing and it's kind of tripping me out. Like, I'm looking at this and I know what it's supposed to be, but also I saw that boat a week ago. Oh, well, AR, you didn't see it with ARB stuff. And no, I did not. And these are true. Australians. They take their boating a whole lot more serious than Florida men. Well, they have to. Have you seen uh, the alligators down there? Yeah. That last guy that was wrestling him, he died. 
Yeah. I heard he died in a bar in Florida. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what April 1st has anything to do with this episode. I, also, I, by the way, this is a full news article episode. Yeah. My apologies, gentlemen. My apologies. Yeah. So, uh, Toyotathon, National Events Magazine, um, they're giving us a sneak peek at the 2025 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro Expert Edition. Um, hybrid off road capability. I mean, we saw it coming, right? Yes. I mean, they, they did it with the, the they did it with the um, the Tacoma. Tacoma. So yep. yeah, I mean, imagine a Toyota equipped with hybrid powertrain designed for off road adventures. This hybrid um, could prove additional torque uh, in power when running, along with. Uh, it, which is really needed, enhancing that performance on challenging terrain while improving fuel cut efficiency during everyday driving. Adaptive suspension system. Um, Toyota's got some of that, and they've just knocked it up a bunch. Um, the system is going to automatically adjust uh, dampening rates and ride height based on driving conditions. So to turn the switch to, you know, you're on rocks, you're on sand. And you'll optimize comfort and sustainability uh, on off-road, ensuring smooth rides uh, regardless of the terrain. And then integrated drone launch pad. Uh, picture that built-in drone launch pad on the top of your 4Runner, allowing for adventures, deploying drones for aerial reconnaissance uh, for photography during off-road expeditions. This innovative feature would enhance situational awareness providing unique perspectives of the surrounding landscape, modular interior design um, that allows for a customizable uh, configuration, different needs for different preferences, removable seats and storage compartments for flexible cargo situ uh, solution. Augmented reality windshield. This, this is out of the world right here. Um, the it's got a heads up design um, that overlays navigation terrain maps vehicle diagnostic diagnostics right in your field of view so that you know what's wrong with your truck you know where you're going um you're tracking the trail as you're driving down the road in world real time um without all the distracting of looking away from what's in front of you I can't wait till somebody hacks this and puts like a Nintendo or PlayStation one emulator in there. <laughs> and then crazy can, taxi. Uh, yeah. Then I, I was thinking, what was the, uh, the one with the crazy clown guy where, he, uh, all that you were like battled cars with missiles on them and stuff. Can't oh, it. um, twisted metal twisted. Oh uh, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just sitting in a parking lot, ripping the steering wheel back and forth and screaming like a maniac. <laughs> Using, yep. using the steering wheel to guys. fire missiles and stuff. All I'm thinking about is the guys over at Pimp My Ride are like, what? Yeah, We didn't have to put a fish tank in the back of this thing. We could have just done a license plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we, 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 we know all the Kia boy problems that Kias have, right? Uh, Toyota's upping their vehicle security feature with bio metric driver authentication um the technologies to enhance security and personalization uh, drivers will use fingerprint or facial recognition to access vehicle controls and settings to ensure seamless and personalized driving experience while also preventing unauthorized use of the vehicle your 16 year old I gotta, kids not stealing your car i gotta cut andy and koi both off before they go on a wild tangent <laughs> about <laughs> tricks so there it you. specifically says facial recognition and fingerprints nothing else many parts of your body has a unique signature to that person and it's a slippery many, slope Aaron. slippery slope many parts many parts of the body i i know very well <laughs> of your guys's plans <laughs> with some biometrics so i just we okay. try to keep a pg around here it, it wasn't a plan we were one. We were warning people of the dangers of this because if you get your finger cut off so they can steal your car, trust me, bad day. 
very bad day, yeah. but there's other things that could get cut off. Like it's still your car that makes it a worse day. So yeah, you're, they're gonna cut off why, your face and wear it. I don't even know why you brought that up because like people have no context. Now we have to explain it. What are you doing? <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're just not. That's too much editing for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right, we've got self-recovery system. Introducing the self-recovery system automatically deploys winches in the recovery gear when it detects the vehicle stuck. So it's just going to open the door, throw your recovery box out and turn on your winch and say, get to town, buddy. I'm yeah. curious how that one's going to work. Like, does it have like a launching system? Cause that would be pretty cool. Like it yeah. just whew, air cannon shoots it out there. I think yeah. it's just going to be you open the back door and you know, and uh, if you ever ran a cash, cash register and the tray opens, you're just gonna, it's just gonna, it's gonna be like it's called out, ching, and your tray is just gonna pop out with your recovery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. It just deploys the gear for easy access. I, I can see that. Okay. Yeah. Among the standout features is a built-in folding table, <laughs> ingeniously dis- integrated in the spare tire cover, um, offering convenient spurt surface for outdoor you dining equipment preparation. Additionally, to concept, concept, the showcase of the removable hardtop, allowing drivers to transform their forerunner into an open-air cruiser uh, to a weather-sealed cabin at a moment's notice in catering to diverse driving conditions and preferences. Now, Ben, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just I want to direct everybody's attention to the image on the screen right now. You'll notice that there there is a an area in the center of the table that would imply that this is a software upgradable system. <laughs> Glorious. That's all I have to say about it. Glorious. Uh, wow. I look, I, man, I, I'm not making the rules. Okay. Like it's there plain as day. I, I know. Um, uh, so I, we got to cut back here. I feel like Ben just that? brushed over this. But Aaron, have you ever seen a rabbit use their water? Have you ever seen a rabbit water? Yes. Yes. It's it's a very similar system. I don't understand why you guys are being so weird about it. (laughs) Uh, Can't wait till somebody's playing this show for their kids. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We got to cut back to this because Ben just brushed over this really quickly. It specifically says in this article, it's going to have a two-door version of I didn't get that far. I did not get that. Oh, get I, that far. Uh, I thought that was in. Uh, I thought nope. that was in the part you just read. Wow. Nope. I guess nope. he just brushed over because he hasn't even read it yet. That's how uh, brushed I, over it is. I brush. I kind of brushed over the fact that it's got a removable hard top. Oh, removable hard top. That's what it was. Yes, that's yes, a big so deal. Like that's that, a throwback that a to the deal. first gens. That yeah. is a huge throwback to the first gens, and I mean, literally, you know, you can pull that top off, have a table go out wheeling your near table still there when you get back and you have the yeah. security of knowing that only you can unlock it because of your unique anatomy that's that's You're security fine. you guys how much would you pay Bio, for personal biometric security? stamp yes yeah all right now getting to the next part is toyota's latest revelation with the four door with the forerunner brings a bold twist of the iconic suv the inclusion of a two-door configuration. Departing from the traditional four-door setup, this innovation approach not only enhances the vehicle's agility and adds a touch of sportiness to its rugged persona. The two-door configuration offers a sleek and dynamic profile catering to enthusiasts seeking a more nimble and adventurous driving experience without compromising on off-road capability. With this exciting addition, the Toyota 4Runner continues to push the boundaries and ca- and captivate drivers with its versatility and innovation. I can't wait till everybody puts some black wheels on this, tends mm-hmm. to maybe a roof rack to be different. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Don't can't don't add mad. too many dark tones because it could change the biometric unlock feature. Yeah, the uh, heat oh, signature yeah, it might be a hot. <laughs> it could be warm, and uh, yeah. as you know, your fingertips are sensitive to heat. Yes. All right, guys, 
Uh, this next article comes from Audio Monthly. Bose, as in Bose Sound System, Sound System launches a game-changing off-road trail mapping software. Bose, renowned for its cutting-edge audio technology, is diving into uncharted territory with the launch of its latest innovation, the Bose Active Sonar System, or BASE for short. <clears throat> Designed specifically for off-road enthusiasts, BASE revolutionizes trail navigation with its advanced trail mapping software. By utilizing active sonar technology, the system scans the trail ahead and generates real-time recommendations for optimal line to navigate obstacles based on the user's vehicle vehicle's details. Base sense simplifies off-road adventures by providing drivers with precise guidance tailored to their specific rig, ensuring safer and more efficient traversal of challenging terrain. Whether tackling rocky trails, muddy paths, or steep inclines, users can rely on base to analyze trail conditions and suggest the best route to maximize traction and minimize risk with Bose experts in audio engineering applied to off-road navigation. Base sets a new standard in innovation in the off-road industry, promising enthusiasts an unparalleled driving experience filled with confidence and excitement. I do have a little bit of inside information about this. I don't have enough really? photos, you guys, but um, but what Bose is doing is really amazing. They, you'll see from the image um, on the live stream. If you if you are listening to the audio. You know, Bose is featuring, they have a whole plethora of, uh, you know, drones that they can deploy and it'll scan the area for you. It's really amazing. They've got a similar system that they're testing out right now in Ukraine, and I'm hearing very good things. <laughs> I, I'm glad. I'm a little, I'm a little worried about this. I think this is super awesome, but you guys all probably remember the Bose suspension system from... 2001 or whatever it was that never came out it was like an active suspension system because it was so that, good yeah wasn't that I, i'm worried that that? That? it was a yes. lexus ls 400 and they like literally advertised it on tv and that never happened which is embarrassing it, advertisements a little bit of a they they featured i mean there were some news articles in the same way that bob lazar had news articles about his rocket corvette so, you know, it's a little bit of a misnomer to say that there was like news about it. I think Bose was just trying to show off, but watching that LS 400 bunny hop over a curb was pretty. That's, that's it right there. Yes. Uh, no one has done that since. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes has some sort of active suspension right now that they can make it like kind of hop up and down a little bit, or it just squats and goes up. And actually, I think it just goes up and down. I don't think it, any tires squat the bobs, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, because I'm in North Florida, I have recently found out that people are adding custom software to those where they just drop the rear suspension all the way to the bottom and the front all the way to the top. It's it's a pretty cool design. Hmm. That sound I thought that was in Carolina. That that well, it got banned. It got banned in Carolina. You know, we're okay. we're a little slow on the uptake right. down here. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well. Our next news story uh, and our last news story is uh, from the Jeepers quarterly tabloid. And it is that Jeep unveils exciting addition to lineup by introducing the 2026 Jeep Scrambler. Now, I am friends Jeep. with the editor of this magazine. He's a little, oh, I'm okay. going to be honest with you guys, he's a little bit, I don't know. Some of the stuff he says, it feels a little fantastic, but but I may have a spoiler to share with you. Okay, well, I, I'm definitely uh, definitely excited to hear about it. So, uh, Jeep Jeep aficionados and off road enthusiasts alike are in for a treat. I don't know why. How did we find out about this today? But it wasn't talked about at Easter Jeep Safari, by the way. So this is kind of weird. Um, they announced the upcoming release of the highly anticipated 2026 Jeep Scrambler, making a significant evolution in Jeep's storied legacy. The Jeep Scrambler revives the spirit of adventure and exploration embodied by its predecessor while embracing cutting edge technology and design. That is a lot for one sentence. Uh, hey, with it, where did you where did you yeah. find this rendering? The rendering? Uh, yeah. Well, it came directly from the Jeepers Quarterly tabloid. You know, it's amazing to me because um, I don't know how accurate this is. I, I may have a photo that's a little bit more accurate, but um, okay. 
I'm telling you guys right now, if they made a Hellcat version of this, he'll pay oh. in Superman. Dude, these would all, be all, all over Florida. Florida, all Florida. Buddy, are you kidding me? Right, this thing looks friggin' sweet. Yeah, I'm sure AV is super stoked to hear they're now making a two door pickup. <laughs> I Just know the version they made. <laughs> another <laughs> another knife in the back. Yeah, I know. AV, I don't know why AV works with Jeep anymore. It's just like, hey, check out this cool mod we make. And the Jeep's like, hey, <laughs> check out how we made that mod OEM two years later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the boys so, over at Jeepers Quarterly or, you know, JQT, it, like if you're on the inside, you know what to call them. JQT. Yeah, JQT. 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 That's, that's what they call themselves. They're all JQTs yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, they really, they got their hands on something special here. Um, yeah, so Koi kind of spilled the beans for our audio listeners. Um, if, if you were in the live group, you'd, you'd have noticed by now, but, uh, it has a distinctive two door configuration. So it's got a longer bed and only two doors, which is a big deal since the gladiator is so long with its four doors. So, um, this is going to be great. So it's built on the gladiator platform. It combines rugged performance with refined craftsmanship ship offering drivers the best of both worlds short wheelbase and compact design make it ideal ideally suited for navigating tight trails and challenging terrain while its robust construction ensures durability and reliability i don't know who added that reliability and word in here uh in the most demanding conditions so that's kind of weird boy i'm telling you guys right now surely we've all heard about uh, town and country ford and how they're building those new f-150 sleeper packages yes if we, we've all found out about that right yeah if we haven't let's just say yes lord have mercy this scrambler with a air quote sleeper package like with an elephant engine under the hood <sighs> tell me right now that they would not sell a billion of those uh, oh no they would I'm speechless. I can't even come up with words. This thing would be phenomenal. I don't know why it's not out. I do love Eric's comment. Finally, another Jeep with no storage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad. What do you mean no storage? There's plenty of room around that extra tire, man. Yeah. The exterior design of the Scrambler exudes timeless Jeep heritage while incorporating modern elements that enhance both form and function. From the iconic seven-slot grill to its bold fender flares and muscular stance, every detail of the Scrambler's exterior reflects Jeep's commitment to rugged elegance. Uh, it has removable doors, so that's good. Fold-down windshield. Um yeah, that's uh, so under the hood. Let's find out what we have for engine options because I haven't read this far into the article yet. Uh, it says boasts a range of powerful and efficient engine options designed to deliver impressive performance both on and off road from the robust V6 to the fuel efficient turbocharged four cylinders. Drivers can choose the powertrain that best suits their driving styles and performances. So it doesn't mention any mention of the hemi option the 392 so maybe that's coming later i'm not sure i think what they're doing is a twin turbocharged version of the 36 pentastar because we know those are crazy reliable yes. no one's ever had any issues with those nope uh in addition to its exceptional performance capabilities the scrambler hosts and has offers a host of innovative features designed to enhance convenience safety and versatility and available integrated winch front mounted recovery hooks um cargo management solutions um yeah it just has those things let's see here as jeep prepares to unleash the 2026 scrambler onto the world stage anticipation is reaching a fever pitch among enthusiasts and adventurers alike with its timeless design legendary capability and uncompromising commitment to adventure the jeep scrambler is poised to redefine the off-road landscape and inspire a new generation of explorers to embrace the spirit of adventure freedom and discovery so there you have it 
and I don't know, you know, look, these renders that you have, they they look super good. I actually prefer these renders to what I was sent. I I think the guys over at JQD were kind of pulling my leg mm. because we know when this episode is being recorded, but uh, I will shoot just quickly share this with you. I don't know how accurate this is. You know, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> I, I feel like I'll get in trouble. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It does. It does it, feel like. Pepper and like just the tires smoking. with the Denny's moves over my hammy uh, could have been a troll. <laughs> That yeah, that's uh, definitely a scrambler on that plate. I, yeah, I so think they were tricking. I think they were tricking. Combo. They might have uh, been fun. We've we've got two different designs. They may have been fun with me. I, I don't know, but but you know, I just wanted to get that out to your listeners. We'll let th- we'll just have to let them decide. So yeah. it well, lands guys, really. well, this this has been a fun episode, but uh, next week. We got big news. We have a pre-recorded episode with Whistle and Diesel, and we're going to be talking about wheeling preparedness. And a conversation gets a little bit heated when he finds out he hates all vehicles. Uh, so he, yeah, he recommended we crush all our vehicles. So that's not cool, well, but it's a great. Hey, and we hope you listen in. I beat him to the punch. Ben, I just want to say, yeah, I beat ben, him to the punch on that. Technically, Ben's got the head start. I uh, use the plus plus P deer and just it's out of here. I technically he won because he recommended we crush our vehicles and then Ben did it. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I would just quickly like to address this uh, comment from Eric yours. Um, he says it was good seeing you, Andy. Unfortunately, I doubt you'll be invited back. Oh, well, while you that. are, while that is correct, I'm not going to call it right. <laughs> oh man well this has been a very just part on hot mic not me this time somebody's gonna listen back to that oh i heard it i heard it you... no, i no, heard no. it too i heard it too i don't let politicians get away with it and i'm not letting you guys get away with it either well you see the newsroom i'm in obviously it's that guy up there Yes. I <laughs> see. The CNN guy is totally telling the truth. Wolf yeah. Blitzer, shut up back there. <laughs> I only do not, no fake news here. I'm just saying. I only do it pre show. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, this has been an amazing episode. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful everybody stuck around as long as they did. This is one of our longer ones, but we had some super important we've been saving up a bunch of these news stories to get out to you guys so i'm glad we could share them with you appreciate you guys listening um especially those who are in our live group watching us um youtube is the best place to find us we really appreciate you guys make sure you're sharing us with your friends helping us grow god bless america Don't forget to visit Patriot Patch and join the Patch of the Month Club. Check out our Gaia affiliate link for up to 40% off. Also, don't forget to head over to Warren Colby Valve and 4Patriots to see all of their great products. We are a proud part of the Firearms Radio Network. Got a question or comment? Send it to us through our Linktree account or by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, and be safe and courteous. Thanks for listening. Do you guys think you're the anybody's gonna believe this? Dude, we're still alive. Hold on.